Good afternoon, God's most beautiful creation. I often say that because I know myself it slipped by me that when I looked at the sky, I said, God, that's beautiful. Uh, when I looked at the land and I look at the terrain, I look at the trees, I look at the grass, I look at the flowers, and I said, God, that is so beautiful. Especially on a cloudy day when you can look up and see all the beautiful shapes. But especially on a sunny day when you can look out there and see the sunrise. And, but any day. But you know one thing it, it dawned on me eventually? That we was made in God's image. And when I realized that we are made in God's image, then it really dawned on me that we are God's most beautiful creation. Because anything that I can create that look just like me is going to be my masterpiece. So guess what? Regardless of how you may be feeling about yourself, God considers you as a masterpiece. You are God's most beautiful creation. So I hope you just dwell on that for a moment. Think about how important you are to God. Think about how important you are to others. And speaking of that, today is a very important day to me. Today just so happens to be my 42nd birthday. And I thank God for it every second, every minute. Uh, I think back a few years back when I was going through stage four cancer. And I thank God that, hey, I am here today. I've been through multiple, from tractor trailer accidents, motorcycle accidents, to vehicle accidents, um, all kinds of crazy things that situations. I was in the Marine Corps going through situations there, crazy, crazy. And I just think back to God, thank you. Thank you that I'm still here. Thank you, God, that I still have a purpose. God, thank you that I haven't blown it. I don't know how many of y'all sit back and think about that. God, thank you. Thank you that I haven't blew it. Blew it meaning that you just tired of me, God. So I don't know about you all on today, but I'm for, I'm really am grateful. Um, again, it's my birthday and it's just, I just look at things and some of the situations that I thought, God, how in the world am I going to make it out of this? But God has brought me through. And today I want to go into the word. Um, God gave me, it's a, if you see at the topic, it's the book of Galatians. And it's a warning for the body of Christ. Um, book of Galatians, the fourth chapter. It's only two verses that we're looking at tonight. It is eight and nine. Um, you know, God is so... So I was going to say weird, but that's not the word. God is so awesome because when I think about, you know, as you take on more and more knowledge in Christ, um, he has a way of revisiting just to make sure that the foundation is sturdy. But also, as you learn more and you begin to receive more information from God, he also um, will give you checks and balances. He'll give you situations to make sure that you check your inward self. Uh, and I, that's a blessing to me because I don't know about you, but if you really start paying attention to your issues, you don't have much time to really worry about pointing finger at anybody else. Just trying to take care of me is exhausting. So um, that's something that I really, you know, really want the body of Christ to just focus more on is checking yourself um, because it's easy to check somebody else. But. It's even scripture. He says, why are you worry about, and I'm paraphrasing, why are you worry about your brother uh, with the, what is it, speck in his eye, basically, and you walk around with a beam in yours. So you and I all have issues. Yes, God is an awesome God. He has, even in spite of our issues, he has called us priests. He has already made a way, if you are saved, to be in glory with him the day you take your last breath. But to honor God, to hallelujah is great. And we can say hallelujah, and they say it's the highest praise. But when you think about the fact that God is asking us to be a representation of him, he expects us to be a representation of him. And it's not when we walk out the house. God is looking to fix the root, which means this is a lifestyle. Um, to fix the root, I can't fix the root of my issues. I can't work on the root of my issues playing church, um, playing Bible study. This has to be a lifestyle to which I have committed to, which I have sold out to, 
to just please God in my life. It does not mean I walk in my daily activities in my own strength perfect. No. But it does mean because of the blood of Jesus, I walk perfectly as God sees me under the blood of his son. And I know that was a long sentence, but when God sees me because I have Jesus, he does not see Tyrese. He sees the blood of his son covering those that look just like him. I hope that didn't lose anybody. If it did, send me a question or send me anything and I'll do my best to give you more info. So anyway, while you're looking at Galatians, the fourth chapter, verses eight through nine, um, let's go into prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you, God, for another day. Thank you for my birthday. Thank you for a blessed day. Thank you, God, that even in spite of all that is going on, God consistently remind us you have total control. You have given us the body of Christ, the victory, not only just on this side, because it's a a mental situation thing. It's a mental thing. Even when we're going through, it's a mental. I've learned, as Apostle Paul said, I have learned to be content. So we can have the victory in mentally, regardless of how bad it is. Mentally, we can have a victory here, but you have promised us the victory when we're going to be with you. So God, thank you for the victory in both situations. God, continue to teach us about ourselves so that we can make us mirror you. Thank you, God, for being an awesome teacher, an awesome, patient God. There is no greater God. There is no greater nothing. There's nothing greater than you. Thank you, Father. We love you. We bless your name. Teach on tonight. Give us these nuggets, God, so that not only can we get off Bible study feeling great, but just have something to sustain us day by day. And I thank you, Father, for doing it. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Follow me again to Galatians, the fourth chapter, looking at verses eight and nine. And it goes as follows. As you know, I say this is out of the MacArthur Study Bible. It says two verses. Verse eight. But then, indeed, when you did not know God, you served those which by nature are not gods. Verse nine. But now, after you have known God, or rather are known by God, how is it that you turn again to the weak and beggarly elements to which you desire again to be in bondage? This is a powerful statement because you and I, in the process, as the body of Christ, it's the process of renewing our mind. See, salvation, when we ask Jesus to and really mean this thing, it's an instantaneous thing. Of being saved. But there's things of. Well there's. An instantaneous thing of being. Grafted into the body of Christ. We talked about that last week a little bit. Uh, Jews Gentiles. But walking out our own salvation. Is an. A daily thing. And so what happens is. You and I as warriors on a mission. We have to die daily. You hear me say this often. And the thing about dying daily. There's a lot of stuff. Can we just be real today? There's a lot of things that you and I have attached ourselves to as we was going, first of all, before getting saved. There's a lot of stuff, as verse 8 said, we placed as gods. Verse 8, look at this thing again. It says, but then, indeed, when you did not know God, you served those which by nature are not gods. Think about, before you got saved, your God was me, myself, and I. Whatever pleased me, whatever benef benefits me, whatever I like to do, that was our God. Now, we knew about God, some of us, but if you watched our daily activities, if you watched us day by day, if you listened to our speech, our speech was about me, myself, and I. So you look at verse 8, and hear me again, it says, but then indeed, when you did not know God, you serve those which by nature are not gods. Okay, so if you're looking at, again, we know how to set up an idol. We understand idols. We understand, But oftentimes we do not realize that we put ourselves as God because God says, um, treat others how you want to be treated. God says, put others, and I'm paraphrasing some of this. God says, put others before you. See, God don't think like us. 
God don't think like flesh. God is spirit. So him being spirit, he knows what to say, how to apply the pressure on our flesh so that ultimately we'll know where to put this soulish realm. Hear me when I say this. The soulish realm is the flesh. The soulish realm, when you hear me talk about, you hear somebody speak on the soulish realm. The soulish realm is the five senses. What I like, what I see, what all these five senses here, all these things is um, the emotional highs and lows. Uh, I feel great today. I feel low today. I feel all these emotional soulish things. God is God is telling us when he says to uh, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things to be added unto you. He's not saying, well, I feel great today, so do this. Uh, Harb, I'm tired tomorrow, so I'm not going to do it. No, he's saying regardless. When he's saying treat others how you want to be treated. See, listen here. This is something, another big nugget God gave me. The big nugget that God gave me, which is going to sound real crazy to the flesh. The big nugget God gave me, God is not judging me according when somebody do something to me or say something wrong to me or say something rude to me. God is not judging me on what they said. Get, hear, hear me, separate the flesh and, and understand the spiritual, the spiritual aspect. God is not, if you call me out of my name, if you talk junk about me, if you say I'm blah, 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 let's break it down to the basics. God is not judging me and giving me a pass because they call me a certain name. God is going to judge me of how I respond. The world, the flesh devil, however you want to put it, says, well, hey, they deserved it. They called me blah, blah, blah. So we've, we've failed that test. Sorry about that. Understand that when we respond by the flesh that way, we have failed that test. God, again, is not judging us of what they said. He's not giving us a pass. What he's saying, what he wants us to do is be able to shake that off and still respond the way God will have us to respond. Respond godly. Amen. Now there's a way of getting people to back up without acting all out of character. And if you want to know how, ask God. He'll show you how. Or talk to some of the people that has already a stable uh, character about themselves. So anyway, that are in God. That are in Christ. So anyway, when you look at verse 8 going back, it says, But then indeed, when you did not know God... You serve those which by nature are not gods. So now, verse 9 says, But now, after you have known God, or rather are known by God, how is it that you turn again to the weak and beggarly elements to which you desire again to be in bondage? What is that? This is saying that now we know God's way of doing things. We have now gotten saved and know what God has called us to do, know how to respond when things happen the wrong way, but yet and still we decide that instead of me seeking God when I'm having a really horrible day, I go back to something in my past that I thought was going to make me feel great, that I thought was going to uh, soothe my wounds. Uh, and when we do that, hear me, when, hear me when I say this. When we do that, we place that as a God. If I, decide, if I decide that, and hear me, these are things, hear me when I'm telling you. These are things that you and I must be on alert about. Because whatever we place before God, but whatever we decide that this is God's spot, because we know because we're a child of God. We know we're supposed to seek God. God will give us the peace. But we decide that I would rather go back to what I used to do and watch somebody I'm supposed to, smoke somebody I'm supposed to, drink somebody I'm supposed to, or go knock on somebody's door I don't belong at. Ah, please don't make me have to make it even more clearer. So I say this. God is calling those things idols. And he's saying, look it back again at verse 9. These are things you and I must be on alert. Listen. And I said this the last video. I understand that many of us did not grow up in churches that we were held accountable. It's okay. You're no longer there. We now know. 
God requires us to be holy. God requires us to not let this be just Sunday, but a 24 hour thing. See, when you start getting into trying to change habits and seeking God and dying daily, it's because you're becoming sold out. It's nothing that the world can offer you that will be better than God. That makes you sold out. Have you ever heard that term before, being sold out? That means that for God I live, for God I die. That means, God, I want you in the proper place in my life, which is the head. So when we start getting in situations like that, God, and you start seeing word and hearing word like this, this is all about being for God I live and for God I die. See, that the devil will tell you, man, I ain't ready to let that go. Well, you just saw what God called that. Devil will say, man, shoot, man, you don't take all that. Man, what about that? I, I ain't trying to let them go. I, I like all these women. I ain't trying to let these men go, man. I finally got them where I want them. I got one to pay the light bill, one to pay the house, one cut the grass, one work on my... I got a woman that'll cook. I got one that... And none of that will profit you anything. Amen? So hear me when I tell you, all that has a surefire way to hell. It is a beautiful... Beautiful road at the first first glance when you look through fleshly's eyes. It's a beautiful road that leads straight to hell. Let's just be real. You got to be real. So anyway, what God is saying in verse 9, it says, um, Thank God I'm getting older. I noticed this. Thank God I'm getting older. I have to look a little, have to sit back and look at this thing. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, verse 9 says, but now, after you have known God, or rather are known by God, how is it that you turn again to the weak and beggarly elements to which you desire again to be in bondage? Truth of the matter is, those things didn't really work before we got saved. And... Now that we are saved, God has given us wisdom to understand it's nothing but bondage. So hear me, you and I daily have to fight. Daily, daily. There are situations, and understand when we fight, I don't know if you've ever seen uh, like those, those championship runs. Um, best two out of three. Even on the world side, there are situations where you might fall, but get up quickly. Donna McClurkin had that song, We Fall Down, But We Get Up. Understand, no, you may not do it perfectly every time. But please get up as fast as you can, dust yourself off, and run head on for the Lord. Okay? Being sold out means I have not, the world has nothing else to offer for me. Amen? And the flesh, hear me. The flesh always going to want what it wants. The flesh remembers. Even though, hear me. Even though you are a new creature in Christ Jesus, and it says, I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus, old things have passed away, all things have become new. You have to make your mind to the point where it's all new. Meaning that I have a different appetite. I don't have the cravings that I had. That you have to do on purpose. Your flesh still wants what it wanted six months ago. In a lot of cases. Which means you have to die daily to that. You have to struggle in sometimes to come out of those things. Which the only thing you can do really is pray and ask God to give you the strength to walk out of it and then set boundaries for yourself. Amen. That helps you build boundaries. And the longer you don't feed it, the quicker it'll die. That's the basic way of, of handling that. War is on a mission. If you want to not if you don't feed that demon. It's eventually going to die. It's going somewhere. It got to get out of you because you're not giving it enough to eat. So hear me. Hear me. Stay strong. Be on alert. We as children of God, we got a purpose. We're warriors on a mission. God has a purpose. Stand strong. Continue to fight. Continue to press. I'm telling you. Continue. 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 It's nothing greater than to have a brother and sister in the Lord that can tell you, Hey, it's okay. Get up. Let's move. Let's keep going. Sometimes I hear the Holy Spirit say, hey, let's move on. And that is a beautiful thing because the flesh wants me to wallow in that mistake. The Holy Spirit will tell me, let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. But God, let's move on. But God, let's move on. That is the beautiful thing. God knows the, the final stage of us. He's looking at where we are going He's looking at how we will be at the end. 
He's already seeing his blood on us. The process is like, son, don't worry about that. I got you. Come on. Just keep coming. Keep coming. When your child is trying to learn how to walk, you know they're going to learn how to walk. You see it happening. They don't. But you see it happening. You trying to teach them how to ride a bike, they keep falling. Man, I don't think I'm going to ever get this issue. Well, come on. Man, they've done it before you. Just keep coming. Don't worry about it. Keep pedaling. Keep pedaling. Don't worry about it. Come on. That's how God is. Stop focusing on, man, I messed up. I messed up. God said, let's move on. Let's move on. So hear me tonight. As you are being sold out, as you are continuing to die daily, keep on fighting. God has a beautiful place for you and I. God is expecting us to win. The victory is already won. It's already set. We just can't give up. So keep fighting. Amen. He said, um, um, he will he, basically, he will elevate us. It, the, I'm trying to remember the exact scripture right now. I just lost, left my mind, but he, he's going to elevate. If I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. As God is consistently being worked out in us, he's going to continue to elevate us. Amen. He's going to continue to elevate us. The more we die to ourselves and all those things of the flesh, God will consistently elevate you. Amen. Until one day you look just like him and now all of a sudden you're in some position that God has placed you in and you don't even know how you got there. Because if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. That is a promise of God. So keep working. You have a process. You have a place of destiny that God has given you. It does not matter on your age. Amen. Some of us say, man, I'm in my late 60s, man. I, I just need to relax now. You have more purpose than you never can imagine. You are still the setting example for your family and your community. Amen. You have a unique purpose. God is not expecting you to get out there and run door to door, knock doors on doors. But guess what? Those he do put in front of you, you got the wisdom, you got biblical experience that you can teach somebody that's right out of uh, uh, this first transition of, of leaving the world. You have a powerful statement. Don't think that your job is over and done with because you got a lot of great. God has purpose. So hear me. Keep fighting. God is not through with us. War is on a mission. We will win it God's way. Amen. It will be done. It's been ordained. Our steps, the steps of a righteous man is ordered by God. It's already set. So let us go into prayer and we're going to close out understanding God got this thing. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. I pray, Father, that the ones that you set to watch this video, that this is an encouragement. And that, Father, you did actually get the glory and will get the glory out of this. Father, continue to minister to us individually. Continue to bring us out of whatever it is that, that's holding us in bondage. God, live us the desire and zeal to just let it go. Drop it at your feet. We don't want it no more. Let us not look back, but to continue to pursue you with all that we have. Father, continue to increase our zeal, our desire for you in every area. Cleanse us and make us what you want us to be. And God, thank you for the victory on this side, as well as the victory when we get with you. We love you, Father. Thank you for this powerful moment. And I pray that it blesses not only me, but your people according to the way you designed it. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I love y'all. I pray you got this. You got something out of this. Don't give up. Keep fighting. God got this thing. I love y'all and I'll catch you next week. Bye-bye.